Today, I want to talk about whether Adam Aaron and AMC sold illegal ape shares by A, selling them without shareholder approval, and B, by selling them below the minimum ape price. I also want to talk about whether AMC is still on the threshold securities list or not, and what's going to happen next. So stay tuned, and let's make some money. And now I'll dive straight in with the key information. So, you may have seen this tweet or the related video talking about how the New York Stock Exchange has cited an improper sale of ape, and how it broke Rule 312. Now has the New York Stock Exchange actually caught AMC committing fraud, or is this, as Boss Blunt said, just some more fud? He said for immediate release. The New York Stock Exchange noted the sale of over 20% of AMC voting power via those ape shares to Antara without shareholder approval. And he said that it is in breach of New York Stock Exchange Company Manual Rule 312. Now this email talks about AMC and Ape breaching rule 312 of the New York Stock Exchange company manual by selling over 20% of the company's voting power without shareholder approval. It also talks about how these shares were sold to Antara below the minimum Ape trader price at 58.22 cents. Now obviously Ape never reached a low of 58.22 cents and therefore this email argues that Ape share sale was illegal. Now I do want to start by saying this isn't an email from the New York Stock Exchange directly to AMC notifying them of illegal crimes. Actually this is just simply an email from an unnamed Brian T sending an email to the New York Stock Exchange. But regardless of who the email actually comes from, has AMC actually broken any rules and committed any crimes and could AMC be delisted as a result? Well, as Tony Denaro tweeted for immediate release, New York Stock Exchange 2020-85 amended that 20% rule, no longer requiring shareholder approval as long as the sale was for cash and the price was at least the minimum a price. He said Antara's December 2022 deal reflected a weighted average of 66 cents per ape unit, but later adjusted his calculations to 82 cents per ape share. And that 82 cents is above the December 2022 minimum price and therefore this share sale is completely legal. You can see here the number of ape shares that were sold and the actual money received from Antara for the forward purchase, the pick or toggle purchase and the at the money share offering. These shares were sold at 70 cents per share, $1.10 per share and 58 cents per share bringing an average weighted price of 82 cents per share. Now 82 cents is obviously above that minimum ape share price and therefore 20% of the voting power can be sold without the shareholder approval because it was sold directly for cash. And I think something else that's even more important that tells you twice as fast that it's actually not illegal is the fact that New York Stock Exchange haven't done anything about it. As Peter Han tweeted, he said, if it was an issue, I would have expected the New York Stock Exchange to have acted on it much, much sooner. For example, we know the shorts are still worried about an AMC squeeze. We know the SEC is still paid off by those shorts, and that's why FUD is still at an all-time high. These FUDsters are still trying to encourage us to sell our AMC shares almost two years later. That obviously tells us that we aren't wrong. And therefore, if the shorts are still scared, and the shorts are still paying off the SEC, wouldn't the SEC have already cracked down on us much, much sooner if AMC had done anything wrong? The SEC would have stepped in on day one and said, nope, you've just sold illegal ape shares. We're going to delist AMC immediately. We're going to delist AMC so the shorts never have to cover. So the shorts continue paying us, the SEC, more and more bribes. But obviously, as AMC and Adam Aaron haven't done anything wrong, the SEC or the New York Stock Exchange haven't notified AMC of any wrongdoing and have not delisted the AMC stock. I imagine the paid off SEC is watching AMC and Adam Aaron like a hawk to step one small pinky toe out of line so they can try and delist the AMC stock. But obviously as AMC hasn't been delisted as a result of these ape shares being sold, clearly AMC did nothing wrong. And again, I think considering the fact the Fuzzers are still trying to convince us to sell our shares almost two years later, just tells me that we are right about the coming AMC squeeze. And again, something else that tells me the squeeze is still coming is this chart of unrealized gains and losses on investment securities. Guys, if you haven't already, be sure to join me over on Moomoo, the sponsor of today's video, by signing up using the link in the description below. You can currently get up to 17 free stocks, entirely commission-free trading, and free level two market data. Moomoo is very easy to use and has a very clean and simple UI. They've also got tons of technical tools and advanced charting tools. 
Moomoo also offers free 24 seven customer support and trading around the clock. We can see here that from 2010, practically all the way to 2022, many of these hedge funds were still generating profits on assets they held to maturity and assets available for sale. This is obviously them generating profits on treasury bonds that did expire or did reach maturity and just open shares they were holding of public companies. These securities or these profits ranged from zero to $150 billion in profits over the last 10 to 15 years. But obviously in 2022, these hedge funds didn't generate profits of 75 to $150 billion. They were losing up to $675 billion per quarter. Now, obviously, after this January and February rally, these losses have probably recovered somewhat from $675 billion lost to maybe only $500 billion lost. But obviously, regardless of the exact loss figure that these hedge funds are carrying right now, all we know is that hedge funds have lost massive amounts of money over the last year, and hedge funds are still indeed screwed. And as Phil For Real tweeted, he said, thanks to phase six margin requirements, that threshold list is popping. He said that's why he is confident this will be the 13th day on the threshold securities list for AMC. And he said if it isn't on there, he's still voting yes to expose those FTDs on Ape that have potentially been hidden as well. Now, the Norwegian Ape did tweet this screenshot taken very early on in the morning saying, here we are, AMC is off the threshold list. Who would have guessed? But as Angela tweeted very importantly, she said the market was closed yesterday and therefore we won't know if AMC is still on the threshold securities list until its release later tonight. Therefore, we do have to wait until tonight after those trading hours to see if AMC is once again on the threshold securities list for the 13th day in a row. And again, something else that I think is very important that could be showing signs of exactly when the next leg down in the market crash is coming is this tweet from Game of Trades. He said market participants should keep a close eye on this chart. He said stocks and bonds have diverted yet again. He said the 10 year treasury yield moving higher has systematically led stocks lower since 2022. Basically showing that since the start of 2022, these yields move up first and then the S&P 500 and wider stocks follow with a small lag. We can see as the 10 year yield continued rising and ended up inverting, the S&P 500 fell pretty, pretty sharply just slightly after. And again, in July and September, the yield somewhat bottomed out before rising once again, and the S&P 500 took a turn and fell even further just again slightly after. And what we're seeing right now in January and in February is the yields topping out once again and now beginning their next run higher. So basically Game of Trade is now expecting the S&P 500 to roll over and potentially reach new lows. Again, it's been about a month since these yields bottomed out and began their move higher, and therefore it should be about time for the S&P 500 to begin falling. And as Markets and Mayhem tweeted, he knows that we're in a bear market rally because unprofitable tech is leading the way and real rates are still rising, pushing risk premiums higher. We know that unprofitable tech like a firm like Coinbase, like Carvana and many other companies have indeed led this rally. We know that's what's driven the S&P 500 higher and we also know that's exactly what's caused many of these hedge funds to be covering their smaller short positions. As I spoke about in a video a few days ago, Goldman Sachs has just reported the highest level of short covering in many, many years. That's obviously been driven by these hedge funds covering their short positions in these smaller unprofitable tech companies, pushing the rally up further. And obviously, if the market is just about to roll over and fall to new lows, just as AMC is still on the threshold securities list and as FUD is at an all time high just before the AMC reverse split and ape conversion, I think this could definitely cause A, the market crash and B, the AMC squeeze. But guys, be sure to let me know what you think down in the comments below. And as always, guys, be sure to ding that notification bell because that way you'll be alerted when I upload a new video. Cheers.